He's got it. There's a school of them, Amanda. There's okay. like three or four of them. Yes! 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 <laughs> this video is brought to you by Undoes It. Welcome to another Gale Force Twins episode. In today's video, we are going to be teaching you guys and showing you guys our favorite technique to running and gunning. Whether you're looking for mahi or tuna birds, we're gonna go over our exact technique. Where we start, what we look for when we stop, what lures we use, what baits we use. Are we using live bait, dead bait? Are we using feathers? Are we using chuggers? So we're gonna go over every detail on how we run and gun for mahi, how to catch more fish, how to keep the fish at the boat, not just mahi, but tunas as well. And that's what today's purpose is. My name's Amanda, Emily's behind the camera. This is Kona, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. First and foremost, let's talk about our bait. Here we have some pilchards and goggle eyes. Now you can use any live bait of choice. If we were in, well, actually, I think I have more information for you guys. I was gonna say if we were in the Florida Keys, we'd have pinfish. We wouldn't even have pilchards and goggle eyes, but we're not in the Florida Keys, which is kind of strange. Check out where we are. You might recognize this little island behind me. This is Peanut Island. Today we're fishing out of Palm Beach. A little change of pace for everybody, change of pace for us, just a fun little change. But, so which bait would we use? So for live bait, if we're pitching live bait for mahi, I would definitely stick with pinfish, pilchards, herring, definitely the smaller baits. Now we also have a handful of gogs in case we do see a big or slammer. goggle eyes, Amanda. Goggle, goggle eyes, exactly. AKA gogs. Gogs, yes. And what else we also like to use, our go-to favorite, you don't even need live bait. The best thing to do is chunk some ballyhoo. So I'm gonna do that or first. Or squid. Or squid. Squid works Whole amazing squid. as well. Whole squid or half pieces of squid, chunks some ballyhoo into like one to two inch chunks. Let's do that first. You may notice we have three motors today. Look how beautiful that is. So yes, Amanda was saying, we got to change the pace today, but we have some live bait in the well. And Amanda, would yes. you like to Here we get go. Other, other hatch, Amanda. Other hatch. That's the build. Of course, that's the build. I know that. <laughs> okay, so Amanda's going to start chunking some ballyhoo. That's something important for running and gunning and fishing for mahi, especially mahi, is that you need to have your chunk bait ready to go. You do not want to get on a school and then not have something to start throwing at them. So let's look at what lures we have rigged already. And there's Kona, she's very curious about what you're doing. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> First and foremost is the rods. So these are our trolling rods and I already have them in the rod holders with the lures. Check this out, already rigged and ready to go. I have a bigger lure on one. This is a nice one, it's kind of cool looking. This is gonna catch, the bigger lures typically will catch the bigger fish, but what if there's no big fish out there? You don't wanna go home skunked. So on the other side, we have a smaller lure. This is an island lure, we love these lures. So this is our smaller lure for your schoolies and your average size mahis. Not saying a big one won't eat this, and a small one won't eat that one, but it's good to have options for your fish. Coming up to the bow, we have we call these keys jigs, we bought these in the keys. But some type of jig to pitch to mahis. So this is with your, you get on a school and you literally want to cast and retrieve out. That's what you would use this for. Then back here, we have two rods with circle hooks and I believe 30 or 40 pound leader. And that is for, like I said, when you get on a school, you put some, that's what the chunk bait's gonna go on. So the bait that Amanda's chunking right now will go on the circle-o, circle-o, wow. 5-0 circle, did you hear that, Amanda? I heard that. Those are 5 O's, right? Yes, we're using, well, we use anywhere between 5 O and 7 O circle hooks, but I would really probably start with 5 O's. And while you're over here, let's just take a look at my chunked ballyhoo. So these are like one inch chunks. Um, now you can see I also have the tails and I have longer chunks for the tails. You could, some people like to completely cut the tail off and I get like rid of it. Emily likes them, here's another one. So, so I would cut that. Yes, and that's it, you can cut this. Now, a variety of yeah, sizes isn't bad, because if you're on a bunch of little fish, having the little chunks is good, but if we come across a really big fish, having the big chunk might be helpful, or if it's even bigger, go with the whole ballyhoo. But chunk it up, one to two inch pieces. Some people throw the heads and tails, some people keep them. I prefer to throw them, I prefer to keep them. So today we're keeping them. Moving on to the next rod of choice. 
is this is actually the Gale Force Do It All rod. And I have a little feather on here. Let's see if I can get this for you guys. Here we have our feather with a 7.0 J hook. This is just like a little, it's kind of like a tuna lure. And what I like about this is that mahis and tunas will eat it. It's definitely more geared towards tunas, but not to say a mahi won't eat it. And you do want to have options when you get out there, because if you get out of school with mahis and you had all mahi lures and the tunas don't bite, you're going to be bummed and vice versa. So quick recap, one troller, two trollers, that tuna feather up there would be a long, so I would put three baits out at one time when I troll. Then when we get on the school, that's what the two rods or pitch rods are for with the circle hooks or the jig up there. That's for casting and retrieving and this is for the bait. Obviously, like we said earlier, we're in West Palm today, so we're gonna be going out of an inlet. And what's cool about this area of the east coast of Florida is that it drops off to 100 feet of water super quick. So first and foremost, the technique for running and gunning is literally we're going to get on plane when we get out of this inlet and we're going to run and we're going to run until we see something fishy. So I wouldn't start looking until at least 100 feet and I would do 200, 300, 400. I would call your friends. I'd be like, hey, do you know where Mahi's been? Um, check some Facebook pages in your area for, for Mahi, things like that. Right, Amanda? That's what exactly, we do. Exactly, yes. Because um, they move, they migrate. There's no GPS coordinates for Mahi. So one day they can be in 300 feet of water, the next, they could be in 800 feet of water. We called some friends and they all said between two and 600. So that's what we're doing today. If you were in the Florida Keys, you it would be similar, two to 600 feet of water, but you wouldn't get there in a couple miles like we are going to today because we're in West Palm. If we were in the Keys, it would probably take five, six, seven miles. Maybe even probably, probably 10 more or than 11. That. Probably yeah, 10 more miles. than that. More than that, guys. Fish brain and we're not even fishing yet. So, like I said, no coordinates for mahi and tuna. These are all pelagic species, they migrate. So we're not going to a location, we are actively looking. The first things that we're really gonna wanna be looking for is weeds, birds, 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 signs of life. So birds is a great place to start, whether they're those little white birds, whether you see frigate birds, you also wanna look for weed lines, but like not messy weeds, like a solid weed line, which hopefully we can see one today. Or a giant patch. A giant patch of weeds, you wanna look for a change in the current, you might see a water color change, a color change, anything like that. And hopefully we can see them today and show them to you. Tell us what you see. I have a school of birds, a school of birds. Is it a flock of birds? We have a group of birds um, around us, like diving like this. And they're small birds, like literally to the human eye, they're, they look like they're this big. So literally she's just gonna put out that one lure and then the second one over there on that side. And I am trolling at about, I am trolling at about six and a half, seven knots, or actually that's miles per hour. We keep our boat in knots, but this is miles per hour. So I would say around seven miles per hour. The most important thing to remember is when you find birds, you got to keep your eyes on the birds. So I apologize for not looking at you guys, but I saw about four to six birds working and I call them working birds, AKA you could also call them hot birds. But what they're doing, they're not flying. They're like diving like this. So I'm going to keep my eye on them. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if they're moving really fast, they're probably on tunas. You're going to have to book it to keep up with them. I'm finding myself out to do that right now. They're probably on tunas. Yeah, they're definitely on tunas. If they were mahi birds, they actually, sometimes, that's, this, is, this is really hard guys, because it, it's, it's a, you can always just say typically, right? But this is the wild, wild west out here and some, sometimes mahis are like, we're gonna be speedy, and sometimes they're not. So just so you guys know what we did, since I wasn't really able to get a visual of the birds, was that we are now in 300 feet, of, 400 feet of water. We were looking around for birds. We saw some diving birds, a group of four or five of them. That's really good numbers for mahis, but they're traveling fast, which means they could be tuna, but they could be mahi. So what I did is I immediately went and put two trollers out. So now we're just gonna troll the area because we know that there's life here, but we're not gonna troll it for long. Five, 10 minutes tops. Amanda, how long has it been? Maybe 10 minutes tops, tops. We kind of lost the birds. They were going really fast. So I had two options. One option is I could have tried to keep up with them and really pushed it or I could just troll the area and just stick in the area. So we kind of decided to stay in the area for five, 10 minutes and no bites. But we have a bundle of boats up ahead and they all look like they're in the same water depth. So that's kind of a hint that maybe there's a weed line up there and all the boats are on there. Or maybe they're on a group of birds, who knows? So we're gonna run over there. We're not gonna be rude. We're not gonna drop our baits right, right by them, but we're gonna see what's going on. And it's a clue, it's information. So if they're on fish up there, then I know that that water depth is good. So then I can make my move directionally after I figure out what's going on there. 
Okay, everybody, we went over to those boats and didn't really see much going on, but I want to point something out. So you look to the left, you see a blue sky, some light clouds, but nothing too formed. Now let's look to the right. We have this perfect formation of clouds. And believe it or not, this is a really, really great sign. The Gulf Stream itself tends to be a little bit warmer than the rest of the ocean, maybe a degree or two. So if the ocean's 70 degrees, the Gulf Stream might be 72 degrees. And what's happening is the warmth of the Gulf Stream is hitting cooler air, because there is actually a nip in the air today. It's hitting cooler air and it's creating this cloud effect. So it's something crazy that happens with science that I have seen before only like once and a charter captain was like, that's the Gulf Stream. We see it again today. This is a great place to stop and troll, which is what we're doing, and to stay in the area. Something else you, you can't really see on the camera to my left, we have pretty flat water and flat conditions. And then underneath the Gulf Stream, let's go back over to it to the right, there's a little bit of chop and white cap. We're really not close enough to exactly see it all, but this is a great place to stop and troll, which is exactly what we're doing right now. There's the Gulf Stream, that's the cloud effect with the warm water hitting a little bit of cooler air. And it is interesting because we're in the middle of June, so I don't know why the air is cold today, but there is some coldness in the air. Fish on in the Gulf Stream, running and gunning, we found them. I have a feeling, well, no, I mean, I'm like pretty sure it's a tuna. A mahi would have jumped by now, and tunas typically stay like deeper in the water. So I haven't seen any head or anything, but we're about to land this fish. We're about to get a right fish. Here. Okay. Right here. All right, Amanda, so you gotta go drive the boat. Skunk, I'll have to drive the boat. All right, guys, okay. gotta drive the boat. Just turn me straight, okay? How's that? Better? Tangled up? Tangled up in the front. There we go. Free? Oh, I think so. Just real. No, definitely not free. Go back. Come on. There. All right. Free. So you can still see the clouds behind Emily. Oh, they're still there. They're still there. I believe they're cumulus clouds. We have any um, <laughs> science I feel like we should know or weather? That. What are they called? We are science majors, Amanda. No, a weather, a meteorologist. If any meteorologist, meteorologist watching this, and you know about this cloud situation and We'd the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic. To hear about it. Yes, please. I would, I would want to know everything you know about these clouds and the Gulf Stream. But it did prove effective. We found something. It's a mahi. It's a mahi? It's a mahi. No way. Guys, it's a mahi. It's a mahi. Oh, oh my gosh. Buddies. Perfect. Where oh, no buddies? buddies? No, no followers? No. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any followers today. So because of that, we're probably just going to swing him. Is he a swinger? Looks like a swinger. a swinger. You see anybody? Oh, we could gap that guy. You see anybody, Amanda? No buddies, that's for sure. Okay, no buddies, but that is definitely gaffable. All right, Amanda. I, I say gaff him. Hurry. Are you gonna do one hand? Yeah, one handed gaff, right. one hand on the camera. Keep him in the water. We got him. Oh, we got him. We got him. Okay. We got him. One hand on the camera. One, one hand on the gaff, gaff, one hand on the camera. Right. Not exactly a headshot, but we'll take it. Let's check out our Mahi. Here we go. This is actually a pretty nice one. Ooh, a nice, a nice cow. Yes, this is a cow. So because the head is rounded. And Amanda, look at your gaff shot. Yes. It actually was in the gut. A gut so shot. We, we will miss take. the meat. Yes, it means no meat was harmed in the gaffing of this fish. So, Emily, what are we going to do now? Now, we're going to look back on our tracks and we are going to stay in this area. We're not, come over here, I want to see the fish. What do you think, Kona? Come on, she don't really care. There are the clouds once again, AKA the Gulf Stream, and there's also a lot more chop over in that water. So what we're gonna do is you never leave fish to find fish, ever, 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 ever. So we're gonna continue to stay in the area, trolling for pieces at a time, and we will let you know if we decide to pick up and make a move. So this is what happened, I'm gonna tell you the deal. We made another pass, we just hooked up. But what we did is Emily threw the boat in neutral, and now you can see, right now, she's throwing chunks of value out, the chunks that I cut this morning. And the goal is to attract friends and schoolies that might be with our fish. So what I'm gonna do is in a minute, when Emily moves out of the way, I'm gonna stand, or she's gonna stand probably, on top of the live well and see if she can see any friends. Emily, do you see any friends? I don't know. Hold we on. don't know yet. Hold on. Okay. All right. Oh, hold on. It's a bonito. Oh man. False alarm. All that for nothing? I mean, it's not nothing, but man. That's a bummer. All right. 
Well, we just caught a bonita, not quite the targeted species, but good practice round at throwing the yeah, chunks out. Round, My yeah. practice yeah. round. Yeah, that was that again. Do we have a dehooker? Yes. Time to dehook, Mr. Bonita. We're just gonna, I only actually have a bait dehooker with me today. It's okay, it gets the job. Gets the job done. You guys are probably asking why we're not on our boat or where it is. <laughs> Swimming away. <laughs> our boat is in the Keys still and we had some business to do up this way on the mainland. And we wanted to get some filming in, some fishing in, so we phoned a friend. Phoned a friend, phoned not a bad friend. friend to have. And we're here to do some videos and filming. Okay, wait, Amanda, Yes. check out this lure. This is the, the new lure, right? This one? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, so we traded that, yes. that like, Clear. So, so uh, after we caught the first ghost, mahi, ghost. we call them ghost lures. After we caught the first mahi on the little, um, what was that a, a little chugger we have out there? Yeah, it was the pink and blue chugger. Exactly. We decided to switch the second lure to something a little bit closer to it. This is a, more of a tuna feather, which makes sense. Just caught a bonita on it. But we just once one lure works, it's not a bad idea to consider making sure you have something similar to it in your spread, as opposed to having just two completely different lures out. Right. You guys can see those weeds right there, the scattered weeds, and now. If we were on a, on a day in the dead of summer where we had this weed line, but maybe another five miles or 10 miles away, we had a really strong, steady weed line, I would say avoid this at all costs, go to the strong weed line. But every day is different and you have to look at your conditions. So on a day like today where there's not a lot of weeds and there aren't really any weed lines, something like that, it's promising, which is what it is today. It's proven to be promising because there is no strong weed line. So what we'll take a scattered weed line plus we have to take into consideration that it is in the Gulf Stream and it is on a current edge so that does make it a promising weed line but usually if if I knew there were strong weed lines out there I probably would run right past this thing and look for something else and the other thing to remember is that this weed line is only in one 160 feet of water so if you could run past it run out to six seven eight hundred if you don't find anything you know you'll you have to come back home so you know you're gonna go back over it so it's like, okay, just mental know where it is, maybe even mark it on your machine, go out, look for something more promising. If you don't find it, you have a backup plan then. What's the plan? Here's the plan. So we stayed in the area, we continued to troll after that bonita for another five, probably more like 10 minutes. No, it was like 20. Okay, we put a whole 20 minutes We probably in. did four or five more passes. You're right, we did. We did U-turns and- we, Yes, but it wasn't we promising. We trolled on either side of the line. But what we have learned is that we did catch a nice size mahi in 150 feet of water. So we know we like the area, but we're going to go ahead and do, is we're going to pick up the lines and we're going to start running again, looking for new signs of life. And if you guys are wondering like what speed we run at, Emily, I would say anywhere between 13 and 20, th third, 20 knots basically. So sometimes we go fast because we want to cover ground. Sometimes we stop, we go kind of slow, just look, look for birds, look for weeds. Sometimes we go fast for five minutes, slow down for five minutes, fast for five minutes, slow down for five minutes. The whole time we're just constantly looking. But this time we're going to stay in 100 feet. Yes. So now that we know that there are fish in 150 feet of water and we, we're okay and we're happy with the size of them, never leave fish to find fish. We could go offshore and find nothing. So we are going to stay in our water depth for now. All right. We are coming up on a floater and, oh, I think it's a jug. We'll get closer to it. You guys, I don't think the camera can pick it up yet. Okay, okay not quite the floater we were looking no. for, but. If it was like a wood pallet or not something so plasticky, what happens is that it grows life, basically. It becomes an ecosystem. So imagine a wood pallet out there that baby fish live under and then the big fish live under it. And that would be a good situation where you can troll past it or you can get up there and you can start chunking some bait and see if fish swim out. Typically when it's like super plasty, like styrofoam doesn't really make for a good floater, but neither did this, <laughs> but at least we picked it up. <laughs> we just found the most beautiful thing you can look for while running and gunning for mahi. I'm gonna try to back I up see to bait. this There's thing. bait here. And here's Emily already chunking her baits. I see bait in the water like bait she, fish. You already see bait in the water. Yep. All right, I'm just backing up to this thing. Oh my goodness. Now that looks like some kind of palm frond situation. But these, any kind of trees and wood can be extremely promising. I don't see any mahis. No mahis? Not well, yet, there's bait on it. So what Emily's doing, she's taking her chunks of ballyhoo. There she is, throwing her chunks of ballyhoo. And mahi. Mahi? There's a mahi. There's, okay, so what one. we're gonna do, grab the pitch bait. Yes. Hold and on, on. I'll grab one too. 
Okay, so Emily just saw a mahi. Yes, I see her. Oh my gosh, there's a mahi there. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put this camera down and we're gonna get the GoPros. He's got it. There's a school of Amanda. There's okay. like three or four of them. Yes! 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 <laughs> okay. So Emily got one hook. Oh, he didn't swallow he didn't it? He swallow it, no. Here. Here, I'll get some squid. Get some squid. Maybe they'll eat squid. Maybe they want squid. Mahi are shy right now. We just gotta get him to eat. Oh, he's coming towards it. He's coming towards it. Coming towards it. Yes. Yes. Eat it. Jig it. Yes. 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 He's eating it. All right. All right. Now let him have it. Let him have it. Let him have it. Oh my. Oh my. Here we go. He's running with Amanda. You ready? They're not interested in pilchards right now. Oh, he's spitting. He's coming back for it. All right. Do it again. Do it again. Nope. Not quite. Dang. All these little jacks are trying to eat him. Hold on. They're they're staring at my bait. I think. Okay. You might have. I have one. I have one. All right. I'm gonna wait plenty long. Give him a chance to swallow it. Three, four. Five. Okay, I'm gonna close the bale and reel and we're gonna pray All that right. the school comes with him. Oh. Okay, next plan of action, because they're not eating, is to start chumming with live bait. So, I'm getting a scoop of pilchards, and it's got one, and we're gonna whack them. This kind of disorients them, keeps them around the boat, keeps them spinning in circles. So if they can start eating the pilchards, hopefully they'll eat the one on the hook. Straight out. Oh, oh. He got it. He got it. All right. One, two, three. That's the smaller four, hook, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's got to have it. Close okay. it. We're on. Yes! Yes! We did yes! it. Oh, we haven't landed it yet. Okay, we have okay, not true, done true, it. True, no. True. true. Not oh. What? Did you just. Oh, oh there he is. <gasps> is it recording? Oh, no. I'm wrapped in the tree. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, no. Emily, back us back up, up to the back tree. Up. Back us up to the tree, Emily. Okay. Back us up to the I'm tree. Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, we're out, we're out, we're out, we're out. We're okay, good. Okay. okay, Emily, get your bait back out. Yes. Okay, hold on. Let me put some squid on. Okay. Okay, as you guys can see, Emily, take a look at my mahi. Okay. I'm keeping my mahi on the rod and reel, which is gonna keep the friends around. Emily just threw a bait out. So we're gonna keep one mahi on the rod and reel at all times with the goal of keeping the friends around. We started with the, what were those, seven O circle hooks and we weren't landing them. So we're like, shoot, we need maybe try a J hook, try a J hook, that didn't work. So we went to a smaller circle hook. These are right. five O circle hooks, what I'm rigging right now. Emily, my fish is pretty much giving up. So it'd be nice if we could quickly get another bait in the water. All right, I'm working on it. What did you catch him on, Sissy? A pilchard. A pilchard, all right. And then Amanda says pilchard. So we do pilchard. How'd you hook him, through the nose? Yes, no, under no. the jaw. Okay, well I just did through the nose. Just get him out. Yes. Try to get one on, and once he's you get one on, we're going to bring my fish in. Oh, he's turned away. He's looking at it. Oh, come on. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Uh, I honestly can't really tell. All right, I'm just going to put okay. this on the wire. Uh, Sissy, put that in your rod holder. Yep. Leave, leave yep. the bale open. Yep, got it. Okay. We're going to gaff this guy. We're going to gaff him because we don't want to lose him. He's been on the hook for a while, so he might have a big hole in his lip from the hook, so it's safer to gaff this guy. I'm going to back up for Emily. Actually, keep reeling, please. Keep reeling, please. Bring keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Okay. Wrong side. Got it. <laughs> the boat. We did it! Yes. Okay, get another bait out. Another bait. All right. Back us up. Another one on. I'm on. Okay. We did it. We did, we did it. it, Amanda. We'll take a look at him. There he is. Oh, so cute. Chickens. 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 Time to measure our chicken. Our chicken. Oh, not quite. Not quite. 17 inches. We have to be 20, 20 to the fork. So we're going to let this guy go. Let's go, Emily. Oh! <laughs> He goes. He was ready to go. <laughs> he just, he gave me a goodbye kiss. He gave me face. a goodbye kiss. Anyways, guys. Okay, so yes. the fishing today? Yes. Is Let tough. me rinse my hands. I think we went over all of our favorite techniques to running and gunning for fish. Now, some people don't like to run and gun because they don't want to burn all the fuel. But you don't have to do it at 25 knots. You can do it at 15 knots and still cover plenty of ground. At the end of the day, you're looking for life birds, weed lines, floaters current edges, color changes, the Gulf Stream. That's what you're looking for. And once you find that, how much life is on it? Did you see turtles? Did you see a sailfish? Did you see flying fish? Do you see bait under your Weeds, palm tree? Palm tree. 
<laughs> there's, I can literally see a, there's a bird on that palm tree right now. So those are the things you want to look for. Throw your lures out, throw your fresh bait out, throw your- Back up to it, live bait, it, live bait. troll if it. one technique doesn't work, try another. If there's no life there, pick up and keep looking. Clearly guys, think about how many techniques, techniques we tried on just that palm tree. Exactly. We've pretty much gone over every technique that we use to run and gun for mahi. We've given you all of our secrets. But now it's time to head back to the dock and clean this boat. Cause it's dirty. dirty. A little pro tip when cleaning a non-skid deck is to get a non-skid deck cleaner. We have the Undoes It non-skid deck cleaner. So instead of using the boat soap when it gets really gross like this, maybe switch it out. Try a non-skid deck cleaner. The deck's kind of already wet just from, I mean, we're on the water, guys. But first we want to wet the deck. Amanda, will you hit the switch? Oh yes. Time to hit the switch. Let's see. There it is. Oops. There it is. All right. Give the deck a nice rinse. Try to... Just get everything wet first. It's very useful and will save you some time down the road. Pro tip, start with a wet deck and keep your deck wet. Also another pro tip. You guys saw how much the dirt really dug into the non-skid deck. Although it may seem simple, dirt, grime, and fish blood removal is actually a pretty complex process. The presence of metal ions like calcium, magnesium, and iron interfere with the ability of your cleaning supplies. These metal ions act like the dirt, the grime, the fish blood, and they use up all the soap before we can even get the boat clean. But the Undoes It Nazgit Deck Cleaner has a chelating agent. The chelating agent combines itself with these metal ions in the water, freeing up your soap to do its job and remove the dirt and, of course, fish blood. Click the link in the description box to get your Undoes It products. Wow, I'm tired. That was a long, long day. And unfortunately, the fishing was not as good as we had hoped. But I mean, we still did it. We still were able to show you guys how to run and gun for fish. And that's the important part. We're talking weeds, birds, um, palm fronds, floaters, anything. You pick up, you run, you make a pass on it trolling, didn't work. You back up to it, you throw your, your chunk live bait, bait, live bait, bait, live bait, chunk bait, anything. So we hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions about running and gunning, post it in the comments. The deck squeaky clean. I feel good to go home. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you get out there, have fun, and stay safe.